the teacher in this series, and I can't even remember the name of the series. I don't know the name of the teacher. He was excellent. And um, you could tell that it was provoking people to think a little bit deeper. Uh, but he had said something and he said that eternal life is knowing Christ. And I remember he said it like three or four times that eternal life is knowing Christ. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking to myself, what does that mean? What does that even mean to know Christ mm -hmm. is eternal life? And there were no answers. He just, he was stating it that eternal life is to know Christ. And so for some reason this morning, as I was doing my study and Ken and I had an awesome round robin sharing time this morning. And after we were spent like three hours, almost three hours just chatting, that scripture popped into my head. And I, and I instantly went back to that time in Bible study when I was questioning it. And I thought, well, why don't I look it up? <laughs> I have the ability to see what was written. So what, what was that really, really saying to us? And that's what I kind of wanted to share with you because the little nugget treasure I found, I got super excited and I was like, oh, now I know why this is really cool. Of course, it doesn't take much to get me excited. Because yeah. <laughs> that's just the way it rolls with me. This is how you see, you do not see yod heh vav -Hey in the New Testament. You see Aloha. And so this, this verse is, but this is the life which is eternal, that they should know thee, who art the true Eloa, and him who ha thou hast sent, Yeshua Mashiach, or Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. And so as I'm looking at this, you know, it seems like it's pretty standard across the board, but until you start digging in a little deeper, and it's like, okay, there's some really amazing stuff going on here. <clears throat> But this, so when we first look at the very first word that we see here, um, this is, these are those really simple words, but they're really profound. So the first one is these, this, he, it, but yet. <laughs> okay. All right. But when we look at the letters to see what's being shared, it says a lot. So the very first word that you're going to look at, what, what is written is a hey, vav, yod, nun. But what the original root is, is hey noon. So, sorry, I said vav, I meant lamed. So it's a hey lamed yod noon from a hey noon. So what do we have going on here? We have an added lamed that is added in the middle of the actual word itself, these. So who are we talking about here? We're talking about the teachers, the teaching shepherds of light that have found that in the inside because this is added to the root because the root is the hey noon. So here's the Lamed Yod right in the middle. The root is the hey noon. So the hey, so it's the revealing of the teaching shepherds of light who have been given the power within the root of their being while they're in their flesh. That's who we're talking about here. So yeah. something that seems so simple is actually really defining by the letters that were added. And then we have Anun. And this word, we literally have the spelling, the constituent letters that make up the symbol Noon. Right here, Anun. So we have the oneness factor being unified <laughs> while we're in the activity of life which is the seed of life, which is to propagate, to be able to produce heirs, to build a strong foundation. And this is the word for fish. This is literally the Hebrew word for fish. So this is telling us as the symbol, as the fish was in the early church, it was propagation of the oneness message, which would lead to the Christ anointing. Now you wouldn't see this in English, but when you look at the letters and you can see uh -huh. what is being defined by what is added, wow. It then it tells you so much more of the story that these teaching shepherds are going to come that are going to propagate the message of oneness. And if we go back into looking at what the root is of that, the root of that word 
is uh, hey vav. And when it was written, there's actually no hay. The, the hay was completely removed. And what the only thing that was left was the vav. So olive noon noon was what was added. The olive, what was added, the only thing that was left of that word was the vav. The olive and the noon and the noon were given. And Ken's sharing something right now. We don't have it out there, Regina, for you to hear, but Jesse did hear a little bit of it this morning about the noon vav. So Jesse, this, these three letters right here, this is Anu. So if okay. you remember anything that your dad was sharing this morning, this is Anu. Yeah, yeah. Anu in the flesh. And anybody that has gone in any studying of ancient Egypt and different things will be able to connect to Anu here. Um, because there's a lot of truths that they have kept from us because Egypt and the language is very much tied into each other. Then the next word that we have is the word that actually means it's a now. It's one of the words for now. Um, and it's the word to judge. Dalit Yod Nun. It's from, from the Hebrew root Dan to judge. And again, when we look again at judging, because I've had people ask about this. When we're looking at judging, we're not to judge one another. We're to judge ourselves because they're just a mirror to reflect that which is within us so that we can see ourselves properly of what we need to work on has nothing to do wow. with them. And so in this now process, because this is part of what this word means is now we have been given the ability because the yod, that vision of the right hand, the power means and direction of the door inward is giving us the ability to judge properly now because we go inside to judge ourselves, And so that's, that's what this is sharing with us. So these teachers that are coming on the scene that are propagating this message of life in this oneness principle of the Christ consciousness, they are coming and they have rightly judged themselves because they've been given the power and what does that lead to? Well, the very next word right here is kaya. This is life. The root is kai, het yod, and then the olive is added. So in life, they found the Christ anointing, the oneness principle, because they were instructed in things that they needed, but they had to be given a vision, a really strong, powerful vision that was setting them apart from those that are on the inside of the covenant and then the ones that are outside because it's the blood covenant of promise that allows us to be able to access these things to those who would enter in to the covenants of promise. And it's, you know, it, it's a hard, it's a hard concept to cross over into because it, it associates with the word obedience and nobody likes, <laughs> the word. nobody likes that word. But when we obedience. are raised up, yeah, nobody likes the word obedience. You know, it's like it, it, it makes you feel that you're subject to something. And if you if you don't do something, you're going to get punished. Or maybe that's just the way I look at it. <laughs> maybe it's me that doesn't no, like I... that word. But but really that it, it, it gives it gives a visual imagery that most people don't like. And the reason why we don't like it is because it has to do with the beast nature. Because mother's job when we're little children is we have to learn obedience to learn what the rules are so that we are properly relating to one another so we're safe. So the covenant of promise is directly related to obedience that when you learn these rules of how to love each other properly, then the rest will be given to you. You know, first seek ye the kingdom and then all else shall be given unto you and the kingdom is within so the process of having that yod added on the inside of us to give us the ability to judge ourselves, we're seeking the kingdom as little children, and we have to learn some obedience principles to understand what the golden rule is about. Your life goes much easier if you, if you operate in the golden rule. You will have lots of less headaches of people butting heads with you if you can treat people through that principle of love the way you want to be treated. Mm -hmm. So it's life. So Kaya, the oneness principle of being sealed in the Christ anointing. And then we get to the word eternal. This is Leolam. 
So anybody that's been in the, the Hebrew Roots movement, you hear the phrase Le'olam Vayed, which means forever and ever and eternity. Mm -hmm. But it's also the root of it means to be hidden or to be eternal. And this is the root. As, so, <clears throat> so the prefix is the Dalit Lamed? Yes, it is. And okay. so when you take a look at this, right in the middle is the Ein Lamed, which is attached to the word meaning to ascend. So I, I like to use the word maturation instead of ascension. We're just growing ourselves up. So we have to enter in. So the Dalit is added. And again, if you're looking at this in English, you would never know that this Dalit was added. Why is the Dalit added, right? And then why is the Lamed added? Well, because of the door, which is an individual that has information for you, the door, which is a shepherd, is going to come and present these teachings to you so you can take them into the inside of you. And it's a teaching shepherd that will come to give you the ability to see the process, to raise up your flesh so that you too can become a teacher of light in your maturation process. And having completed it now in the waters that are above, that are out of chaos. And that's really what we're talking is eternal. The lower, the lower waters of chaos is us being in our forgetting. Because once you know, you no longer have chaos. That's the difference with the waters above and the waters below, the Hashamayim versus the Mayim. Uh, one is in chaos, forgetting, and the other one is in the place of remembering. And the reason why I can say this is because once we remember, we know we're, inter we're eternal beings, which is the whole point of this word translated. We know we're eternal beings because we've ascended out of the lower waters. Then we get to the word no. The root of it is yada, to know. And so I've highlighted, highlighted the root. Now in Hebrew, that word would have a yod on it. But the prefix is dalit nun, which is a word that means judge, to judge. And then we have the vav nun on the suffix side, kaf. So these are the ones that have connected to father and meekness that now have incorruptible flesh because they took that spiritual path that father's presenting kind of the esoteric hidden side of the language that has helped them to overcome their beast ego nature. And they grasp the whole of the, the language that brought forth the revelation on this father's side. It's not on the mother's side. It's what's being revealed through the father's interpretation, they will know. And so we still have that same word judging, but it's the judging of ourselves by going inwardly. And it's the spiritual path that we take through the door to the inward man so we can begin to see that which is needed to know the process of how to connect to father and how to have incorruptible flesh which totally speaks of no longer having the beast ego attached to us. Risen flesh. Now this is the part I'm excited about. These two words right here. When you go in, um, I'll just show you because it's just better if I just show you. I like to prove things and not just say it for you to take my word for it. It's the same root and it's Aleph, it's Aleph Noon Tav, and it means thou. But when you go into this word, it means a being of substance. A being of substance. Because I was asking the spirit on this, and this is why I got so excited today. When you go into what is written, the door is added on the front of it. So it's the door entering into becoming one who is of substance and of substance, you are God. Now, <laughs> and so we're on God. I'll just explain this first. So the Aloha or the Alaha that is in the New Testament are those that are the strong teaching shepherds that carry the revelation of oneness. They are considered God. And if you connect that to like the process of Pharaoh, 
who was raised up and seen as God is because these teaching shepherds that have been instructed in the way of one, having the Christ consciousness, they come in a oneness unity, a universal love that is a love without conditions. They love all. So their frequency is much higher. And that is, a, that is why a lot of times um, even entities that have come in the past to assist others, they worship and they deify them because their frequency is so much higher that the only way that the lesser vibrational frequency can attach themselves to it because they're in the beast is they have to think, well, these people are gods, right? Because some of the things that they're even going to be able to do once you get out of the place of forgetting, you know, being able to do telepathy, being able to um, float, <laughs> walk through walls. I mean, of course, you're going to think that they're a god. They're an anomaly. But that is who we are in the root of our being. We just forgot that. Because we went through the veil of forgetting. Because we're the ones that are limiting ourselves. The only limits that are here are the ones that we place upon ourselves. And that's why we push so hard to remember so that we can stop limiting ourselves. So no, back to this word, these, this phrase here. This is the reason why I got excited. This is noon. This has to do with the flesh. This has to do with the body. This has to do with the activity of life. And then we have the olive top. So what the spirit said, and I just, I just about jumped out of my chair. I was like, oh my God, I know what this is. This is the word made flesh. A being of substance. Because it's the Aleph and the Tav, which is the construction building blocks of the language that builds your flesh. So now that you are a being of substance, as having become the words, all of through the Tav, made flesh. And it's showing us that it's something that happens within us. It's a spiritual path that is found within us that makes us the words manifested in flesh, just like Yeshua. And he said, I am the door. So he's presenting this to us saying, I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am going to show you the way so that your your flesh can be made the word as well. Hence why he said, you need to eat of my body and drink of my blood. He wasn't, he wasn't talking about his own flesh. He was saying, eat of the things and drink of the things that are going to make you just like me. And of course, you know, in English, they translate it out and it makes everybody all spooky. Oh, it's in cannibalism or whatever, right? However they wanted to. But the cost that is required for people to gain this, like we were talking about earlier, is that you have to count the cost because there's much that changes in your life. And that gap of being able to be in the world in that lesser vibration period or, you know, that lesser vibrational frequency where the rest of the world is, you just no longer fit. You just don't. Mm -hmm. and people don't understand you. But for those who want to reach higher, I don't know about you. But this is, this is where I'm aiming for. I want to be the word made flesh, just like Yeshua. Because he came to present that to us. And it's the same word. It's the same word twice. And of course, in the English translation, they don't show that. They just say the, that they might know the. But it's being of substance, the word made flesh. Being of substance, the word made flesh. Who is God? So this is a double importance. And again, you wouldn't see it unless you look at the original scriptures, because anybody that has been around enough in the Hebrew, especially like the Hebrew roots movement, Messianic movement, Judaism, understand that that principle of saying a word twice is stressing double importance, meaning pay attention here. Verily, verily, I say unto you, pay attention to what I'm saying. You too can be made the word made flesh and be as the strong leaders, teaching shepherds that are going to bring forth the revelation of oneness. And then we have the word truth. This is the door, the Dalit. This is the door to truth. And the truth is, hence what they want to hide from us, the truth is that we are all one. 
That's what that is saying to us right here. We are all one. And you will find that if you go through the door of your inner man where that revelation will come because it's going to consume. It's a consuming fire that is going to burn away everything of that beast ego that says we're separate through the twin teachings. You're going to have to be raised up a mother first because you're poor and destitute in her teaching. And she's got to raise you up to be a first fruit of the golden rule so that you can enter into father. You're poor and destitute in his teaching and he will raise you up to be a first fruit in his teaching. And then you will know that the truth is that we are all one. Wow. And then we have the word for one again. Chult. For what? It's another word for chult. The word for what? For one. For one. For one. For one. Let me scroll down. How would you break that down for to mean one? Well, because right now I'm showing you what the root is, and it means only or alone, <laughs> meaning one. And the reason why I know this is because the difference is it's the same word. It's the same oneness word, except now it has a vav in it, has a vav in the middle of it. So het dalit, so let's go back into so you can see it as it's written. The het dalit. So don't look at the Vav right now, because we're going to talk about it in a minute. But when you see Het Dalit in the New Testament, it is the, it is the Aramaic form of the Hebrew word that means Echad, yeah. to be one, to be unified. But in Aramaic, you see it as Het Dalit, but it's still connected to one, being one. I and my father are one. Our God is one. But this time, it's the added vav. So what's happening in this process is that once we understand the truth that we are one, our heart is pierced with that truth. And now we're connecting to it inwardly, meaning you know that you know. <laughs> it has been made manifest within you because your heart is pierced with the truth of this measure. And here's the beautiful part on this. I just why this why I, I just this language just ravishes me, because when I see the beauty that's written, it's like oh my god, I just wish everybody could see it, because it it's so much deeper and it touches you at a heart level where it's just like surface skimming in English and you can't even touch it. It's like you don't touch the real. It's like it's a it's an echo or a a fog that that mask what's really underneath because what's been added on the front of this word is bell this is the shortened version of husband it's the shortened version of husband so the whole process of a husband that comes in the spiritual sense is that a husband is supposed to teach you this truth of being one. This is a spiritual husband. This is a spiritual husbandman. He is to teach you that. So that, and if we break it down in its simple paleo, so that you have inside authority. The husband is coming to bring you something to connect you to the truth that we are all unified as one so that you can be pierced in the heart, know it, and have the inside authority of that. And how does the husband do it? Well, gives you the vision that comes through the language that brings forth this revelation. That's what they do. Then we get down to the next word, Waymen. And when we look at the Memnoon, this speaks of being a part of a stringed instrument, or this is literally how we spell the word manna, the exact same spelling of the manna that they found when they were in the wilderness. And it's interesting how, you know, they, they spelled it in English as manna, um, M. 
sorry, I want to say it in Hebrew. It's so hard to cross over. Mem, no, sorry, M-A-N-N-A. -N -N -A. That's how they write it in English. But when you look at the word itself, it's spelled this way, mem -nun. So the living water teachings that are given to you while you are in the flesh. And then we have the word that is meant, it's uh, being sent. Now, I, had, I, I needed to look this word up because in, uh, in Hebrew, not in Aramaic, this would be the word shalak. And we've heard like the term people that have been in the Hebrew roots movement for a while here, Rav Shiliak Shaul, the apostle, teacher, Paul. But this isn't the word shalak. This is a different word. It's not shalak. So I got out my, first I'll show you what they say it is, because um, it's important, but I'm going to take it a step further. So they're just saying that it's send. We're going to go into Jastro's um, dictionary so you can see it. And this is the, the dictionary that basically that they use for the Targums, the Talmud, and the Midrashic literature. And Shadar, if you can see down here, as I'm moving my little cursor. So it means to order, to send. So one who has been ordered to be sent, but that's still not enough information. So I'm gonna pull up my Ernest Klein's Etymological Dictionary, because I knew that there was something greater here that I needed to share. Wait, which word is it? It's the Sheen. Shadar, Sheen Dalit Resh. I find interesting. it interesting to, to throw oneself forward. Yep. To throw <sighs> oneself forward, to strive, to order, to send. In Good the Ernest these Lines, it says, I'm glad I have my glasses. This is such small print here. In the Ernest Kleins, it says to send and to broadcast. To broadcast. He exerted himself, something that was sent. Another one is to be a broadcaster. And it's also, I find it interesting because Ken has been talking a lot about uh, trees, different trees that are used, especially in like making the Ark and uh, the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark of Noah. The tree symbolism is just crazy of how much information. And this is connected to um, the birch tree. And I think there's, there's a lot of really cool stuff about birch trees in general. Because if I remember correctly, doesn't the birch tree send up a lot of shoots? I'm pretty sure it does. It's one know. of the annoying things of the birch tree is it's always sending shoots out of its ground to repropagate itself. So mm -hmm. you can see how this is connected to this word because broadcasting this message should produce more shoots to bring forth new life of what is connected to this message. And so another one, it's just a message in a radio broadcast, but it's also connected to the word spine, to the spine. Mm -hmm. So being able to stand erect. And it's interesting because Ken, I've been delivering some of these messages and we've been talking about the trees and atza, which is tree, also has the meaning of spine. So that is the Hebrew word, which is ein, zadi, hey. So to see the journey in which you hunt and chase to find the father's revelation is what's going to give you an erect spine, which is necessary for you to stand properly. And so this word connects to tree, atza in Hebrew, but it's sheen dalit resh. Now, the one in spine, this word as a spine has the hay added on the suffix. But in the written form right here, it's a tov. The thing is, you cannot get the tov of the Father without the revelation of the oneness message first. Because the hey always has to come. The revelation has to come first before you can actually connect it and become one with it. I mean, you, you know, we think about, I didn't understand this oneness concept. Not when I was in the Christian church, you know, I, we would hear, I and my father are one, and I wish you would know that. 
you know, I wish you would, how long do I have to be with you in order to teach this so that you can become one? But that was something that was never really discussed. We didn't have Bible studies to say that this possibility was there. Had no idea. We -hmm. were limited in our thinking. Other religions comprehended that and have taught that for thousands of years. But we didn't have that. But we do now. That's what's being presented to us now in the language. So this <laughs> partaking of our manna and approaching it in humility through mother, connecting ourselves to it and going through the door that's being presented, the person that's bringing the message to you, they are broadcasting this message loud and clearly so that you can have a spine. You're not a spineless one. You now have a spine, which means you can stand For what? The truth that we are all one. And then it's manifest in you by finding and being marked with unconditional love. This to me resonates in what I was explaining before the teaching and uh, the experience of standing um, and having fallen and standing and experiencing is, is this word that Shadar yeah. Um, to throw yourself forward and it feels sometimes like a planking like what I was you know it's like in the gym like holding your core tight sometimes you have to hold it it's like holding that position that space of remembrance until it becomes your new normal yeah until and you what, and and what is the most one of the most uh, important principles in holding a plank doesn't it also have to do with your spine tight glutes yeah tight glutes but, tight core but it also is uh, yeah. that, erects that spine that yeah. is in that place of neutrality. You know, it's not, it's not flexed one way mm-hmm. or another. It's in a neutral position, which we can connect to the narrow path. I mean, it's a perfect analogy, Jesse. It's a perfect analogy. And now we can connect it to this word. So to be able to hold also. that is just say, Shadar is holding your plank, having the spine that is there's, necessary. There's an element of... Um, Definitely activation and, and uh, you know, it, it's uncomfortable st- staying oh, okay. there. So there's a, there's definitely a level of, you know, daily choosing to throw yourself forward. That's how it feels like what I was exactly. trying to articulate. Throw yourself forward. Stay. Yep. yep. Yeah. Yep, exactly. And so in looking at this, it's going through the consuming fires that purify you as you go through the inward door to reveal to you what is necessary to raise you up from being poor and destitute, to becoming a first fruit leader, the head, the top, the highest, that is now marked, completely pierced within through the Father's unconditional love. And then we have the word Yeshua Mashiach. And I, I really felt that it was probably good for us to look at Yeshua's name to be able to see what's going on here. So I actually pulled up, uh, Bible Hub's having difficulty, so I had to pull up strong, um, what is that, study light. So Yeshua's name, um, this is the root from uh, from his name. It's Yashu. And um, even in, and when you connect to this, if you go and trace it into the Hebrew, which I'm not, I don't have that access with the strong number right now, but it also means a rock. Um, Shua, which is Shin Vav Ein, means a rock. So, you know, upon this rock, Shua, I shall build my church. And church means, doesn't mean a building. It means my witnesses who have a testimony. That's what it means. Mm. My witnesses that have a testimony upon this rock, Shua, I shall build my witnesses who will testify, who will broadcast the Father's love, unconditional love, the truth that we are all one. And so the root of this word, so his name is a combination of rock and this word. It's the marrying of these two words. Upon this rock, I will build my witnesses. And it means to save, to be delivered, to save and deliver, to save from moral troubles, to give victory to. But this is, he's coming to teach us the way. He doesn't do the victory for us. We have to work on this. This is up to us, right? 
because no man can save you. His work in what he did doesn't change you. Only you can be the change that you want to become and that what you want to see. He can't do it for you. He can just point the way. That's what a teaching shepherd does. This is the way. I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to bring forth and I'm going to broadcast this message to you. And I'm going to give you the door, meaning I'm going to give you the blueprints of how to do this. But you're going to have to enter through it yourself. I'm presenting it to you, but you have to walk through it in order for you to be liberated and delivered. And what are we being delivered from? The beast ego that tells us that we're separate. Because what we just saw is that we aren't separate. So the truth, the truth is that we are all one. So he's coming. And the, and the difference here is we have the Yod added, you know, it's Yasha and then Shua. It's, it's the combination of the two words. So he's coming to present that to us. And what is he presenting? How to be anointed. Because the root of Mashiach, and I think I can actually show this to you by tracing it down. Because this is important, because this is actually connecting to the wise and foolish virgins, which I need to go in with you. But the spirit said we need to we needed to really we needed to look at this. And I was like, OK, I'll be obedient. There's a reason why this foundation needs to be here. It's saying that it, it comes from Messiah, anointed one in Christ. So I'm going to go down. So Mashiach, if you can see where my cursor is, it means anointed, just means anointed. It also means, through Jastro's dictionary, a high priest installed by anointment. And anointing, installation by anointment uh, or anointing has a hay on the end. But hay and olive are interchangeable. They are always interchangeable. It's the inhale and the exhale, the breathing in and the breathing out of spirit. You have to have the revelation before the oneness, you know, the exhalation of that which is being presented for you to inhale it to become one with it, to be able to breathe. And that, you know, that's even connected to the as above, so below, because the universe breathes. We don't realize it, but there's an inhale and an exhale. There's an expanse and a contraction, which happens. And Ken has spent a lot of time talking about that, having to deal with sovereign love. And then we can actually take that to the expanse and the contraction of our own heart and how much the lungs and the heart are connected. So it's all based on spirit. So it's not going to show us right here, but the root, the root of this word means oil. It just means oil. All right. And we already talked about the, the light coming forth in the light. That was last week that we shared that. Here's the word for oil. Mashacha. The only thing that's missing is the yod. This is the root for Mashiach. But in Aramaic, it already has an olive on the end of it, on the suffix. So this is the oil of anointing to become one. The difference is between the two. Mashiach has the yod. And if we go to what I said in the very beginning, the teaching shepherds are coming to bring that, to give to you. So when we go back to the wise and foolish virgins, they had the oil. It just hadn't been activated yet. So there was an understanding of the principle that the oil would bring forth the anointing for them to become as the anointed ones. But those teaching shepherds had to come to present it to him. And that is why at the beginning, the groom, who's supposed to be a husband, which we were sharing before, the Bet Lamed, the husbands that would come to bring the inside authority, they come as a groomsman because they've already become the bride. They are both. They already know how to do it. So that is where the teaching shepherds are coming to bring forth that vision to activate the oil that's in the lamp. So you can deliver yourself from your beast ego and be one who is anointed just like Yeshua was. 
sealed in the Christ anointing as the activation takes place within you. That's the power is that vision that is given by a teaching shepherd of light. Because once that's given to you, yada, the word to know. So we were talking about um, knowing yada, dalit ein. The root of that has a yod in it. <laughs> it's yod, dain alit, dain alit. Yod, <laughs> dalit ein. The vision has to be placed within you in order to activate and to know. And then when it becomes established, it is then da'at. It is the place of knowing. You took that vision and you did something with it and you were able to be marked with the covenant of the Father. And so these teaching shepherds are gonna come and broadcast this. They're gonna propel others to propel themselves forward that they would have a sense of urgency to want to become this. And that's what they're bringing, which is life eternal. And the beauty of it is this word olam means to be hidden. What's going on here? <laughs> These doors that are coming as teaching shepherds of light are hidden in the world right now. They're not glowing. They have flesh suits on. They're like everyone else right here. They have their lower flesh on, but they're coming with a message and they're going to show people how to have eternal life so that you can have that knowing that this is the truth, that we are all one. So it can become your inside, your inside authority as one who is married. Super helpful. Beautiful. It's amazing. So that's why I know that the spirit said this had to go out first for us to be able to continue going on with the wise and foolish virgins. Mm. Because if we don't understand what the whole purpose of it is, if we don't understand what eternal life is, if eternal life is knowing Christ, it's being able to understand the process of our becoming because we built ourselves upon the rock that has delivered us the ability to become the anointed ones. And this is what we're doing. We're broadcasting this loud and clear because the way has been opened. The book has now has been unsealed and we can see these beautiful truths that have been hidden from us in the time of the revealing, in the time of the apocalypse, which is just the Greek word that means revealing. And Hollywood and everybody else has done a really good job to make everybody freaked out about it. And if you, if you do sign up for the lesser narrative, if the English narrative is your truth, it is scary. But for me and my house and what we're doing, this is what we see. And this is what we want to share with everyone else. And it wrecks me every time I dig. <laughs>